It is the biggest climate disaster. In July and August 2022, Pakistan received 391 millimeters of rainfall, about double of what it usually receives in this period. This led to flash floods and landslides that killed 1,700 people, affected 33 million people, and left almost a third of the country inundated. Pakistan has never seen a more stark and devastating example of the impact of global warming. Life in Pakistan has changed forever. Currently, almost the whole of Nigeria is under flood. It has already claimed 600 lives, destroyed 200,000 homes, and affected 2.5 million people. Pakistan and Nigeria are just two recent examples of devastating climate disasters this year. In fact, each month of 2022 saw an extreme weather event, pounding different parts of the globe. These extreme weather events are not just devastating, but terribly expensive too. Initial estimates peg Pakistan's loss and damage at around 30 billion dollars. This includes infrastructure, homes, and loss of lives. But long-term impacts from disease, loss of livelihoods, and destruction of social and cultural institutions are bigger losses that have not been accounted for yet. So, who is going to foot this bill? In the last few years, this question has become a contentious issue in the venue of climate negotiations. The developed countries are majorly responsible for the bulk of the greenhouse gas emissions that are heating the planet and thus causing such calamities and damages. Developing countries want the developed countries to pay for these damages. They want a mechanism for such loss and damage. Because of this COP, the Alliance of Small Island States developed a historic proposal for loss and damage that went on to win the support of the representatives of six billion of the world's people. Establishing the Glasgow Loss and Damage Facility at COP26 would have been historic—a clear signal to the outside world that we heard the cries of the most vulnerable and we are in solidarity with their plight. However, this was a red line for a handful of developed, developed countries. And instead, what we got was a dialogue. How is this climate justice? There is scientific consensus that anthropogenic climate change is changing weather patterns across the globe. The worst affected by these natural disasters are developing countries that are not responsible for climate change. Take the example of Vanuatu, a South Pacific island country. It is a net positive carbon emitter, which means it soaks in more carbon dioxide than it emits. And therefore, is not responsible for climate change. But does being an environment-friendly nation help to avert climate disasters? Absolutely not. In 2015, a supertropical storm named Pam, with almost 300 kilometers per hour winds, nearly flattened the island country. Vanuatu's economic losses from the storm were estimated at some 700 million dollars, and its public debt doubled. We're a very small country in the South Pacific.、Uh, we're an archipelago, 83 islands, but only 300,000 people. And you can imagine, you know, beautiful landscapes and very friendly communities, which we are. But unfortunately, we're also very much on the front lines of the climate crisis.、Um, I just wanted to highlight、um, the the two major extremes that we've、uh, experienced in the last years: two Category Five cyclones. Now, these are not、um, minor storms.、Uh, both of these storms、uh, caused a loss of over 60% of GDP in both cases. And in the case Of Category Five Cyclone Pam that wiped out 96% of our food crops, so huge levels of loss and damage. Similarly, Pakistan's share of carbon dioxide emissions is only 0.7%, but it is straddled with a 30 billion dollar bill from the 2022 super floods. It's the face of the climate victim has to be at the center stage of the negotiations because that then brings out the principle that if if We have a polluter pays principle, which has been established. 
when you have pollution disasters, you say the polluter must pay. And you say that also as a matter of global principle lawmaking, because it is a deterrence for more pollution, which is where the question of loss and damage is about deterrence. It's about saying that if you don't reduce your emissions at the scale you're supposed to, you will have to pay reparations. What is interesting is not everyone is equally affected by the consequences of extreme weather events. As a down-to-earth analysis revealed, in the first nine months of 2022, extreme weather events affected 75 million people and caused over 10,000 deaths. Asia and Africa accounted for 94% of the people in both categories. But neither the US nor the EU figure amongst the top 10 countries that face these casualties, even though the US is historically responsible for 25% of the emission, while the EU's share is 17%. Therefore, developing countries are asking for a mechanism to receive reparations from rich countries for climate change impacts caused by the latter. This is not the same as finance for mitigating or stopping greenhouse gas emissions, an adaptation which is future-proofing against the effects of climate change. According to the Spain-based Basque Centre for Climate Change, by 2030, developing countries would require $290 to $580 billion to cope with climate-related loss and damage. Currently, the developed countries have roadblocked any suggestion for a mechanism for loss and damage. In the 2021 climate conference in Glasgow, the developed countries scuttled a move to set up a financing facility for loss and damage. But that story is for another episode in this series. If you liked this episode, do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.